Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. For this review, we're going to take a look at the Acid Rain Speeder MK2, um, which is 118 scale and it comes with a military infantry unit. And uh, let's start off with the packaging first. Um, very interesting packaging detail here with a little hole so you can poke your finger through and feel the texture of the speeder inside, which is kind of cool. And uh, the artwork itself is very simple, very clean. And spinning around to the side, well actually let's spin around to the top first. You've got acid rain here on the top here. And on the back you've got a nice artwork of the, of the speeder MK2. So there's three units of them. And this shows you what you get inside. You've got the infantry unit and the speeder which can transform between the vehicle and the robot mode. And on the bottom some warning labels. And this is actually a slip cover that you can slip off to show you the actual packaging inside, which is very lovely, very nicely textured. It's got this military style kind of look to it. Let's spin around to the top, acid rain here on the back, very simple acid rain logo. On the bottom, again, the same thing. On the side, ST88, I'm not sure what that means exactly. And on this side, it's the same again. And let's open this guy up and have a look at the contents inside. And on the inside, it comes with this massive fold-out poster, which has got the same artwork as the back, back of the slipcover. And on the inside is actually the instructions to transform the speeder, which I can't actually fit in my studio, unfortunately. But I think you guys get the idea. Very lovely cardboard stock. And you also get this uh, piece of paper with some printing on it. I think you can cut this out so you can use it as a uh, diorama piece. It's like documents and things like that. And the actual toy is housed inside the styrofoam box. And the infantry unit is sitting on top there in a little plastic bag. And the speeder itself is sitting in the styrofoam with some plastic wrapping around it to protect it. And here are the contents of the box. So you get the speeder MK2 and you also get one infantry unit. And he doesn't actually come with any accessories except for the helmet, which you can slip onto his head like so. And it fits on there quite nicely. It doesn't fall off. With the infantry unit, it's uh, very nicely painted. It's got a lot of weathering going on to give it a uh, real world kind of look. Um, sculpting is quite nice, um, but I do feel like the joints are a little bit on the soft side. Uh, apart from that, I do like the styling. The colors are really nice. Uh, the back of his pants look a little bit dirty, but uh, that's okay because he would be sitting in the MK2 most of the time anyway. And uh, let's have a look at his face. Very lovely gas mask detail there. Although the paint job on his face is a little bit um, messy, but uh, I guess that's okay because once you've got the helmet on, you can't really see that anyway. And the helmet is kind of soft and squishy. Um, so it's not going to break that easily, I don't think. And his body armor is a separate uh, flexible piece, which simply slips over his torso. So that's kind of cool. You can actually take that off if you wish. And then you can actually see the inside diaphragm joint there. And here's a closer look at the Speeder MK2. And first off, you can see he's got very lovely, realistic style paint job. Everything looks kind of weathered and rusted, so that's really cool. Um, the design of the vehicle itself is quite um, interesting. It's got two wheels on the front, well, four wheels on the front, two on each side, and a big fat wheel on the back on each side. So that's really interesting and cool. And um, there's a lot of lovely detail on this, on this um, speeder. You've got some nice print detail there, and you've got like a little pickaxe in the front and I think this actually can come off to be used as a um, accessory for the infantry guy same as the spade on this side let me just try and pull this one off without breaking it hopefully yep so it comes off and you can use this as a little um, accessory for the infantry and it simply clips on up here so that's really cool and the other thing that you can take off on this guy is these things on the back 
and I think these are supposed to be like document carrying cases or weapon carrying cases and you can actually open it up somehow let's have a look yep so you can open it up and you can use those um, print cutouts and put them in here as if he's carrying some important documents and they slip into the back of the vehicle like so and it's same on the other side so you got two of those uh, another cool feature on this guy is the rear view mirror it looks very intricate and very easy to break but it's actually very soft so if you happen to accidentally you know catch on this it's not going to break it's just going to bend out of the way and have a look at the back you've got some nice detailing of the um, tow hook rope but it doesn't actually function and on the bottom still heaps of detail even on the bottom which is very lovely to see and obviously the infantry can sit inside the speeder so let's um, open up the hatch so that just flips open like this and you have to undo the seat belts they're just latched on at the back and these things are nice and soft so you're not going to break them and then just kind of pose your infantry guy So that's how he looks sitting inside the speeder. And now onto transformation. So the transformation for this guy is pretty simple. Um, first of all, you just want to undo the side to release his arms. Then you want to undo his legs from the side. They're just tabbed in onto the side here. Sorry, the guy's head just came off, but I'll fix that later. And one side is a little bit tighter than the other, but that's okay and then you flip his feet around like this rotate the feet down and then around so the wheels are fast facing down and you can hear the nice clicky joints and that's pretty much I think his legs done just um, angle it properly and then just a note there are these flaps that can move up and down I'm not sure exactly what they do but they are there and then with his arms you basically just bend the elbow around and then pull out the cannons on his hands so he doesn't actually have any hands they're just gun hands but you do have to extend the cannons out and once you're at this stage you pull this whole piece back flip this piece down and then flip the panel down so the pilot can actually see out the front and I think that's pretty much okay hold on you have to point the gun towards the front and then I think that that's pretty much it okay I've just realized I missed a very important step and that is to turn this piece around and then rotate the legs down so this will give the the robot a little bit more height and then turn it around and it clips into this space here yeah that's better and this I think is the completed robot mode so you can see the proportions are much nicer now he's got a longer body so yeah my mistake but the guy is still kind of sitting awkwardly in there but it's not not a big issue I think overall the design looks really nice and now onto the articulation and we'll start off with the infantry dude so with his head let me just take his helmet off first he can look up heaps high all the way pretty much vertically up so that's cool he can look down oops his head came off again he can look down to about there and he's got tilting from side to side because he's got a ball joint for the base of the head as well as a ball joint at the base of the neck so very good 
a good range of motion for the head area. He can kind of spin all the way around, so that's really good. With his shoulders, he can lift up his arms that high and down to there and swing all the way around. There's no bicep swivel, but I'm pretty sure you can swing his, yep, you can swing his arm in and out at the elbow section. And with his elbows, it's a single joint elbow, but there are some ratchets in there, so you can kind of feel it. And it gives him a 90 degree bend there. And with his wrist, he's got a rotation and also a hinge joint, so he can kind of go in and out. But it is a little bit, oh no, I've just unstuck it. So in and out for the wrists. And um, if, as I've shown you earlier, he does have a diaphragm joint, but I think because of the armor piece, it's kind of um, hindering the movement. So I'll just take this piece off. So you can see his diaphragm joint. He can crunch forward that far and back that far and some side to side as well. But obviously with the armor piece on, he's not gonna be able to do that as much. He's got a rotation at the waist joint all the way around. He can split that far and kick forward that far, kick back to about there. And he's got thigh rotation, double jointed knees. They are a little bit stiff and they are ratcheted. Let me just try and get it to bend as far as possible. And that's a really nice and deep bend there. Let's bend this back first. Oh, you can actually do some crazy chicken leg action as well, but we won't do that. And um, for his ankles, he's got rotation all the way around. He can tilt his ankles or his feet down that far, up to about flat, and he's got massive, massive um, ankle pivots. So very nicely articulated for the size of the figure. And now onto the articulation for the Speeder MK2 in robot mode. So first off, let's start with the head. But obviously he doesn't have one. Um, even though this bit here, I think looks kind of like a head. So it can go up and down like this. And obviously forward and back for transformation. And with his shoulders, uh, he's got a few tricky joints here. So first of all, you can see he's got these two um, rotation or hinge joints here and there are actually ratcheted so you can kind of butterfly the elbows oh, sorry the arm back and forth like this but you'll notice the top of the joint isn't actually attached so every time you artic articulate it it kind of just bounces around and I'm really scared that this might break one day so you just have to be very careful with that joint so I try not to use it as much as possible and then with the shoulders you can lift up the arms to about there and back down to about there and rotation all the way around or oh, actually not quite all the way around because it gets stuck there but pretty much yeah okay it can't go further than this either because you'll start getting some rubbing so pretty much from here around to there which is still pretty good he's got um elbow joint oh, sorry bicep swivel and it is ratcheted as well and this one does go all the way around he's got a single joint for the elbows so about 90 degrees and you can hear the nice ratcheting there as well and obviously no wrist joint because he doesn't have any hands and then moving down to his body obviously there's no joints here because it is the cockpit for the vehicle mode uh, but in terms of his hips, he can pretty much do a full split and you can hear the nice ratcheting there. And then he can come down to there and then he can kick forward pretty much all the way and back pretty much all the way as well. So that's pretty good. He's got thigh swivel up here. And he's got another joint here for the chicken leg um, bend. And it bends from straight to about there. I guess it's like a backwards knee. Um, so he doesn't actually have a proper knee joint. But he does have, um, coming down here, he's got an ankle pivot, uh, sorry, ankle um, joint that allows him to move his feet 
down to there and up to just there. And in terms of ankle pivot, this whole assembly moves, which is also for transformation. And in terms of size, the Speeder MK2 in robot mode measures about 23 centimeters tall, which is about 9.05 inches. And the infantry dude, he measures about 10 centimeters, which is about 3.9 inches. And now for some size comparisons, and uh, we'll start off with the infantry guy first. And here he is with Hot Toys 1 to 12 scale snap kit Briarios from Appleseed. Here he is with Star Wars 3.75 inch Stormtrooper. Here he is with McFarlane Toys Titanfall 2 Jack Cooper, pilot figure that came with the BT-7274. DC Icons Superman and Marvel Legends Cyclops. And now for some size comparisons for the speeder. Uh, here he is with Hot Toys Appleseed 1 to 20 scale Landmate. Here he is with McFarlane Toys Titanfall 2 BT-7274. DC Icons Superman and Marvel Legends Cyclops. I don't usually collect 1 to 18 scale action figures because I do think they are a little bit on the small side. I do prefer my 6 inch action figures. But um, I do understand why they've chosen to go with this scale. Because, you know, having to make um, 1 to 12 scale vehicles and robots can get very expensive very quickly. So I do appreciate that. And um, I do absolutely love the aesthetics um, of the Acid Rain series. Um, this is actually my first set, so I don't really have anything else to compare it with. Um, the reason I got this one was because I do like the look of the robot. And the infantry figure itself is really nice as well. I was quite surprised at the, at the amount of detail and articulation that they were able to get into a small 1 to 18 scale action figure. Um, I did wish that he came with um, a gun or some sort of weapon that he could use. But uh, apart from that, um, I mean, the main focus of the set is obviously the speeder, and he doesn't disappoint at all. Um, all the little details are there. The paint job is super nice, and I really just love the aesthetics of this guy. The wheels turn, although they're not rubber wheels. They, they, they are kind of soft plastic, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, I just really love this type of... Um, military style realistic kind of rendition of what we may see in the near future so definitely gonna keep my eye on the acid rain line um, not sure if I'm gonna collect many more but if they do produce other robots that kind of have this aesthetic um, I'll probably I'll probably end up getting them as well and that pretty much concludes my review I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time for another toy review.